Hello, welcome back to my channel, Delightful underscore Dawn. Are we leaning? Let me fix the camera. Take two. Welcome back to my channel, Delightful underscore Dawn. I am Dawn, and welcome, welcome, welcome. So today I decided to do something a little bit different. You know, normally we do some makeup or show some clothing, but I wanted to do uh, like kind of like an advice type situation, basically flying while fat. The things you need to know plus size edition. If you are not a plus size person, maybe this is not interesting, but it's something good to know to know like what is going through the mind or when you see that plus size person entering on the plane or even tips that you can take while traveling to know, you know, it's probably good to know type facts. For me, stuff that I've learned along the way, stuff that I've had to research. Just a little nit picky because I recently traveled for my brother's wedding and so I brought up like, ugh. I used to get straight anxiety whenever I traveled. Like period, like, I used to think like, oh, I'm gonna have to go on this plane. I'm gonna have to be like, kind of like subconscious about situations. And that will kind of like go into the details. I'm like, I'll just tell you my experience on each part on each part that we talk about. Cause right now we get along winded. Let's get into, let's get into our numbers, let's get into our stuff we're gonna talk about. The first thing that I would suggest to do like while traveling i would suggest we're going to talk about like packing like when you pack it is extremely crucial to pack wisely especially when you are plus size i mean you don't get the luxury of folding it like you see the department store no sis do not do that i'm telling you this not because i'm saying oh you don't get to fold yourself nice because once you get there you can iron it out you need to develop the rolling method I have something so right here i have a, a skirt one of my fave skirts. And I would normally say to fold it this way. And then from there, you can always do an extra one if you're confident that you can go that far. And then you will roll it. Still a pretty nice hefty size, even after that rolling. But the more space that you can utilize, the better. I would suggest to wear clothing, but you can double wear. <laughs> Like the more simple, the more one piece it can be, or even if you can't, if you don't want to double wear it, because I mean, not everybody want to double wear their clothing. You can, I would say, get like dresses, like get one piece type outfits, maybe like a jacket or something, like a um, kimono to put over if you're vacationing. Those are always cute and in style. But yeah, that'll be my suggestion. As far as makeup related, I kind of always try to keep it inside a clear baggie because that's like a airline policy for when you put in stuff through security for security purposes you have to have it inside a clear bag or baggie can't fit in here so far as makeup wise and i'm not bringing it period so let's go on all right the second thing that i would suggest with um with traveling while being plus size is the airlines you want to pick the best airlines that fits your needs as a plus size person so i mean if you you want to go fat friendly airlines let's say to go through all the different airlines policies depending on the area that you um, actually live in what airlines are available to you and so where you actually trying to travel to and a lot of times people are like you know i want to get this airlines to choose from and maybe not every airlines are fat friendly but i normally for me for my personal experience i've only ever traveled with southwest airlines as well as american airlines and i think i, I flew once with delta and each experience is different. I would say upon, these are like two tips when it comes to like with airlines. It's to one, check in as early as is possible uh, with Southwest. So you checking in as early as possible is probably like the biggest thing with them because it's open seating, meaning that you choose the seat that you sit in. So it's not no, you don't have like already set seating assigned. So I mean, when you're on that plane, you kind of like, you know, searching, goggling for the seat that you want to sit in. So the, the earliest that you can actually um, check in, I believe is 24 hours in advance. You can do it from your phone. So I would say do it from your phone, get that ticket already on the phone. That way you don't have to wait till you get to the airlines to check in. So I mean, you'll be the last person to get on the plane, which makes it harder to find a nice seat to choose from. Now, if you do fly with the airlines, they do not let you, if it's not open seating, such as um, Delta or I believe American Airlines, I would say to choose a seat depending on the area that you're the most 
depending on where's your most um, lovable area, meaning the most the, the chunkiest area that you have, will depend determine on where you want to kind of sit. So if you are the person that like, I like a window seat when I get on the airplane. I like to sit to the window to look out of it to see like the clouds to be able to control when it's raised when it's not raised because you don't get that option when you know the two seats or depending on how many rows they have. Like you don't get those options. So I kind of like to sit towards the window. Now when I sit towards that window, the way that my body is shaped, like I can, if someone, if we got multiple people on there, like I can squeeze over to the window and still be pretty much comfortable for me. But if you are more, I'm not a really hippie, if you're a hippie person, some people like to sit on the, the, the row, the row seat, only because it gives them the option to be able, if someone in the middle of them, they can kind of scoop over to kind of give their leg, put the leg out there, so they can have just a little bit more um, leg room or just body room if they don't want to be squished up to that necessarily to that person next to them. Another thing is when you actually coming onto the plane, I would already suggest to ask for an extender when you are getting on the actual plane. So when you see the stewardess, that's the um, is it the stewardess? Is it called a stewardess? The flight attendant. When you see the flight attendant, immediately ask them like, hey. Um, can I get a seat extender and then depending on the airlines they'll ask you what seat that you're in if they do not have a seat extender up at the um, front they'll bring it to your seat or they'll um, just give it to you right then and there that way you don't have that awkward moment while you're sitting in the seat next to somebody and having to flag them down because you can't get your seatbelt on so sis just even if you think you don't need a seat extender get the seat extender it's more comfortable you can adjust it to your body if you don't need it you don't have to use it just get the seat extender it doesn't cost extra and you can just clip it on in and you're tight and you're fast and you're comfortable and you just ride. You just you just fly. Flying through that. I would say like another like suggestion I would have when traveling would be just what you're carrying on the plane. If you do decide to bring on a, a suitcase that will go under and then the carry on, then that means that carrying on item can be some things that you know just in case. You know, by the good Lord, we don't want our bags to get lost, but sometimes it happens. So I would say always pack at least two outfits or maybe like a two dresses if you are a woman. If you are a man, try to pack at least an outfit or two to fit inside that carry on. That way if the suitcase is lost in the nation and you have to wait for it, you have some options versus having to go out and purchase items, items from another state, which may be expensive depending on the area that you have traveled to. And I would say always for me, personally, I always carry me some toothpaste with me. I always have my headphones on deck. I always have like a little crossword puzzle. You know, headphones really do work because, because when you do find someone that's annoying to sit next to, sis, you want to be completely disengaged from the, the situation over there. You're like, you know, this person being mad annoying, this person being mad loud. Or if you get next to the person that's kind of like annoying, that wants to talk to you about everything, you can easily pop in those earphones, even if you don't have nothing to listen to. You don't have any music on your phone. They don't know it. They just know you got headphones in. So you can easily disengage from like the conversation or to feel like you don't have to feel so uncomfortable if someone is making you feel uncomfortable in the situation. I'm a really friendly person so I kind of like to talk to the person that's next to me especially in those situations where it's like a long flight or even if it's a short one it's always nice to make new friends you know what I mean like it's all be friendly when you when you're friendly with someone you feel more comfortable that way you don't feel like you know I don't really know I might be being a little bit I might be in a space that we can all say, like, like, sis, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm too much on you, or like, sir, I'm too much on you, they be like, no, no, you know, you cool. When you have a smile, have this joyful personality, then a person cannot do nothing much than be nice to you. If you're coming on there with an ugly demeanor, then most likely that person's going to have an ugly demeanor with you. So I would say be positive, be optimistic on this travel game because it is pretty much as much as you can make the experience for yourself. If you come in there being negative Nancy, you're gonna have a negative Nancy situation on that, um, on that flight. But I think the last tip that I can personally give someone who is traveling is to dress comfortable as possible. You know what I mean? Don't come in there trying to be too cute for, you know, trying, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not a model walk, you know what I mean? You can still be cute and still be comfortable. The way I like to dress is real casual normally with a um with a jacket of some sort pretty long probably go past like my 
This is a jacket. Let's just say this dress with like a jacket, some leggings, some slides, something that's easy to slip into and out. Because first off, when you in, when you're getting on, when you come into the airline to go to security, the security would like you to take off your shoes. So if you're coming in there with shoes that you have to buckle up or you have to tie, it's kind of hard to do that sometimes. You have to bend over and everything like that. The time for it. Like it's, it's pretty, it's, it's going pretty rapidly. So you want to kind of get off your shoes and get as quick as possible and put them on with as much ease. I would personally suggest wearing flats, meaning like this, like sandals or flats. I would say flats, like this flat shoe right here, like a slide and then wear, put some socks over it. And you can always take this, when you put your shoe back on, once you get it from out of the, um, the scanner, then you can take the socks off if you don't want to be country. But the reason I say to put on some socks is because you have to walk on the floor as your stuff is going through the machine and getting checked. So you don't really want just for clean reasons, you don't want your foot to be touching the ground. Why? Because they also walk through the, um, the mall, not the mall, <laughs> through the airport with dogs sometimes. And you know, dogs feet be everywhere. Like, this can be on feces. Like, you don't know where people's shoes and stuff is being. So you don't really want your, like, your bare skin to be touching the floor. Not unless you're okay with that. But I would suggest putting on socks. So far as with the shirt area, you can either, I like to go in, um, like I said, leggings and a t-shirt, something that's real stretchy and comfortable, a jacket. If I know that I'm going somewhere afterwards, once I get there, I sometimes wear just a one one stop type shop type situation, like a full dress or like a like a, not a dress. I would say, what is it called? A maxi dress, something that's long, pretty comfortable. Still wear the jacket because sometimes like, oh, I don't need no jacket, I'm not a cold person. But when you get on that plane, it is freezing. When you get into the airlines, it is freezing. And you want to make it as comfortable as possible for you. So you are, if you are hot body nature, then I would still say bring a jacket because you never know how the um, the temperature is going to fluctuate while you're there. So just bring a jacket just in case. Like it's not going to hurt you to bring a jacket. It's not going to hurt. Like you don't have to bring no blanket or bring something you can put easily over your shoulders. If you're on the plane, you can easily roll up to put on your neck. If you want to lean over and take a little quick nap, it's just something to like, like, to think about like you want to make sure that the transition from the uh, actual airport coming in and going to your airline and your destination is comfortable as possible it is smooth as possible to be so with all that being said like the last like, this is the last thing one last thing this is the last thing i'm gonna reiterate this because this is something new. the more positive that you are going into a situation will determine on how you're able to you actually deal with it Try to be as positive as possible. Ask questions that you think or ask as many questions as possible as well. If you do not know, just ask. If you feel uncomfortable, just ask. That is the reason that they have a customer service desk. You want to know about something, you feel like something is being done wrong, or you feel uncomfortable, or if you just want to know more information so far as the airlines wants to get there because you didn't do the due diligence on figuring it out prior to getting onto that particular airline then you can ask the young lady or the young sir that's at that desk questions regarding the flight. I was just once coming in there. That's why we said we want you to be early, sis. We want you to be able to find your um, flight and to get there to make sure you do the pre-boarding, the check-in as early as you can possibly can. They allow you to come on the airlines and that way you can feel it comfortable. You're not in any anxiety setting. Once you see people floating in, you can just easily get outside your plane and get to your destination and you can have you a good little trip you know what i'm saying like at the end of the day you want to be able to enjoy your vacation to enjoy your trip whether if it's for something that is not maybe the enjoyable time but you can it, it can be transitioned smoothly smoothly why are you saying i keep mixing up all my words y'all i'm not doing it on purpose though like don't get me wrong i'm not doing it on purpose but i keep doing it with that being said, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to thumbs up, comment inside the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the notification bell so you are notified every time that I upload. And give me any suggestions of videos that you would like to see in the future. Anything that you've seen here today that you would see, you know, just constructive critics. I am still, I'm still, I am still a small YouTuber. So any type of constructive criticism, I gladly take in it. With that in mind, continue to be unapologetically you and all that you do. Much love to you. Until next time, peace, love, and elbow grease. Bye.